<clears throat> All right, round number four underway. We have Jose Marrero again playing against Brandon Dixon. Let's see who's starting us off. <clears throat> it looks like Brendan is starting us off here on the right, playing single strike Gengar and just a path and a pass. This is not what we like to see. Jose running Mew though, so um, I mean you know he has a stadiums in the deck, but Path to the Peak is very destructive to this deck right here, and it looks like Jose's hand is not very well equipped to deal with this right off the bat. We see in Alessa Sparkle, he's flirting within his hand. There is a psychic energy he also has access to, but I don't know. He has to make something happen. He's also flirting with the idea of Peony to discard his hand and draw a few cards instead. Power Tau. Hmm. Yeah, this is just not a great hand for Jose, but I mean, looking over at Brendan's board too, he just went Gengar Pass with this path. So things couldn't be too good for him either. <clears throat> But Peony, things could happen. So let's see what we get off of these two. Both of those switches now gone. So discard your hand and search for two cards here. Training Court and Battle VIP Pass is the options. We're gonna crack them both immediately. Training Court in play, Battle VIP Pass. Gonna search out two basic Pokemon of Jose's choice. And there you have it, Peony able to fix a bad situation that Jose was almost in. Bumping that stadium, we now have three Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. Jose's hand is small. He had played the Power Tablet. We have no cards in hand, so we're going to Fusion Strike for th or Fusion Strike System for three cards here. So that's the cool part about Peony as well. You s essentially guarantee yourself a way to discard your hand and make it as low as possible. You search your deck for two uh, item cards right. Or sorry, two trainer cards right after that. Quick ball and a uh, quick ball and a quick ball. Probably gonna search out. Ooh, actually going for the clan pearl here. Um, okay, so we're playing the Huntail that turns off single strike Pokemon. And let me start putting some card images up on the screen for us. So there's Genesect for y'all while I go and download um, that card image here that we need of that Huntail. Or Gorbis, my apologies. Forgetting what my Pokemon evolved into. Right, it's Gorbis? Yeah. No, maybe it is a Huntail. Is that right? Okay, yes, it is Huntail. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, so this is what Jose is setting up to use here. This Huntail with Single Strike Dreamer. Your opponent's Single Strike Pokemon's attacks cost one more at all times. So now everything that is single strike in brendan's deck will cost one more g max swallow will now cost three and then a colorless the first attack two and a colorless just adding one more to everything so this is a pretty cool tech in the deck but it's still not out yet so brandon does have a full turn of doing whatever he wants still but um not much is going to happen this turn he doesn't have any hound hours in play yet so tower of darkness coming out i'm going to discard one of these urns to it let's see what we get we just sycamored a little bit ago too so supporter has been used for turn. Gengar finding its way to the board and Cramomatic. Let's see what we get. Spinning the wheel, and that is a six. So you can search yet. Yeah. So Brandon gonna search himself out one card of his choice. Already flirting with that Houndour, going straight to the front of the deck. And this is good too. Uh, Cramomatic says you don't have to show your opponent the card either. Not having to show your opponent the card is honestly really huge, especially when you're playing against like players of a higher caliber, because if you just flip over the card immediately and slam it down, it shows like, oh, okay, so he was searching for that? I wonder what's in the rest of his hand. And that can actually give information away, too, if you just slam the card you search when you don't have to show your opponent. Because like right now, by him not showing it, it looks like he could have just searched for that Hiding Darkness or something. But instead, he finds a Hound Hour, puts a Hound Hour down. Hiding Darkness hits the active, so now this Gengar can retreat for free. Two energies on the Mew VMAX already, and we are sorry on the Mew, and now we're turning into a Mew VMAX due to Evolution Incense. And 
Mew VMAX right here. This this is uh, quite the infamous Pokemon of the format at the moment. The 310 VMAX Pokemon has that attack. Cross Fusion Strike. For two colorless, choose one of your bench Fusion Strike Pokemon's attacks and use it as this attack. So you just need two to do it. So right now, what Jose is definitely eyeing up is Genesex Technoblast that does 210 damage. But now adding Power Tablet to it, it's now doing 240 damage. Plus 10 from Vitality, 250. Cramomatic discarding the battle VIP pass. What does uh, looks like Jose hit his heads off cam. Searching his deck for any card here. And it looks like Jose is gonna push that fan to the front. Old cemetery looks like it's finding its way to the front as well. So is the Huntail. Many decisions for uh, Jose here. Jose trying to come to the decision of what is better and what is going to do the most for my board in this situation. Brandon saying, let me read that thing. I've never seen that before. Oh, it says my attacks cost one more. Rip. I have to now dedicate three Houndoom effects to this. So this now tells Brandon for game two that he'll just need to turbo out as many Hound Hours as possible because uh, making it so your attacks cost one more, you always have to have a guaranteed way to make sure you get that extra energy attached. Lest Brandon does want to spend a turn hunting the Huntail and knocking it out. No pun intended. Peony. Jose just going to pitch his hand again. Search for these two cards. Fan of Waves putting it back. And then Old Cemetery about to come down as well. Fusion Strike system. We see a Fog Crystal in the hand, too. So we're doing 170 right now after effects. Um, it, did we just go for, yeah, it looks like we just went for Max Miracle on the active <clears throat> Gengar. Opting to not use Technoblast here because Technoblast does say that you can't attack on your next turn, or this Pokemon can't use Technoblast on the next turn, so you would have to do some switching shenanigans even though Mew does have free retreat cost. But Jose going for the Max Miracle, just as a guaranteed, much better option. It doesn't give, um, it doesn't ever put him into, it, it. it's just the best thing at the moment. You know, he's not one-shotting right now because he didn't hit all the power tablets back-to-back. -back. So he doesn't want to ever put himself into a situation where he couldn't do something. So by doing that, uh, by doing Max Miracle, he still can do whatever he wants on his next turn not barring himself out from having to f make sure he has the VMAX to pivot into and the other energy. So sometimes in a case of where, like, I'm not getting the one shot here, it's probably best to not do the attack that requires you to... that has some kind of drawback to it. You know, Max Miracle doesn't really have a drawback. It's just 130, goes through effects. That's good. We like that. But... Mm -mm. You know, again, if he would have Technoblasted, he wouldn't have been able to attack on the next turn. He would have had a pivot. And something crazy, too, now. This is where Huntail starts being pretty annoying for Brendan. Brendan only has this one Houndoom in play. He can single strike Roar to one guy. But he still will be short energies. So he can put it to this Gengar. It'll go to two energies. Can't use pain, or won't be able to use uh, max slumber or whatever it's called. The dark slumber attack. The first attack on the Gengar, I won't be able to do it because it's attack cost one more right now. That, the tool jammer, the two counters. Crobat. Finding third Hound Hour. Liking Brandon's board a lot more now and replacing his tower with his path to the peak. And 
and there we go. Now, Jose is going to have to probably... Oh, I mean, he had the old... Temp oh, the, 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 I can't talk, sorry. He already had the old cemetery saved. So, Path, not going to cause an issue at all right now. And Jose, very good on his part to just hang on to it. Going to boss his order up. The Gengar. Fog Crystal. Fail it. Now, if Jose has tablets, we could see uh, knockout here on the Gengar. We see one in his hand. Just YOLO Technoblast, it looks like. Pass and an escape rope. He's going to fail it. Second system for two. Hits Quick Ball and Fog Crystal off of it. Not the cards we're looking for. So currently, it's Technoblast um, this is doing 210. Vitality Band is turned off due to Tool Jammer. If he played the Power Tablet, he'd be doing 240. I mean, we guaranteed have knockout here, yeah. So Jose just gonna take two, uh, take two prizes here using Techno Blast and knock out the active Gengar. Taking first blood in the set. Earn a vitality from Brendan. Gonna put back two of those Fusion Strike energies. He's gonna roar one of them out immediately. And Marnie coming down. Both players are going to shuffle their hands. Brandon will be awarded five. Jose will get four cards. Now, Brandon just wants to... Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to find the other two single strike energies we need. And we can just G-Max... Uh, or sorry, we can Fear and Panic for a knockout here. No problem. So cram a from Brandon before he attaches that energy for turn. Flips the tails on it. Damage from Old Cemetery as well, cracking both Fusion Strike systems. These energies are coming from the deck, so they won't actually add the extra damage from Old Cemetery. Um, looks like he's going to fail the second ability. Maybe we have some lost in the prize. Is attaching that for turn. Jose telling him to take Old Cemetery damage. Fear and Panic is going to take a knockout on this Mew VMAX. Fear and Panic saying this attack deals 60 damage times 60 for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon B and GX. So, uh, he's weak. Mew is very weak. So, uh, we don't even need to do the <laughs> do the math here. It's a lot. It's, it's enough to knock out a Mew. What, 480? Is what that was doing? Probably more because there was another Pokemon I played prior, uh, prior to that. Oh, and we had single strike energies on too. Mellow what up coming out? Evolution incense. Jose gonna find that Mew V Max, get it right back into play. Look at this hand, chat. Oh, that's his deck, rather. Sorry. Look at that deck. Not that many cards left. Having Peony in your list 
instantly means that you're always going to be playing with the low count of cards in your deck for the most part because you're just discarding your hand left and right to get the things you need. And that's a crazy thing about Mew. It draws a lot of cards, but you know, there's been variants of the deck where like, oh man, they miss their VMAX a lot. So uh, what better way to guarantee cards you need than Peony, right? You know, just discard my hand. I'll go get that incense. I'll go get a battle VIP pass. I'll just get whatever I need instead. That's why we like Peony. Alessa Sparkle. We're gonna grab two Fusion Strike Energies. And it looks like the idea here is we're just gonna go for Melodious Blast. Or Melodious Echo, rather. Dealing 70 times 70 for each of your fusion strike energies in play. And his final system. And there's gonna copy. Melodious Echo to take a knockout here, matching Brendan's, or sorry, putting himself down to just one prize remaining. Now, does Brendan find a way to build another Gengar VMAX quickly? And I don't, I don't know. So, we can attach three energies, or sorry, two energies via single strike roar. Oh, three. There's, okay, sorry, there's one in the active. So we can attach three, so we just need to find one other energy so we can paint explosion at least. And that could get us the game. But Brandon then has to find a way to retreat this Houndoom. Ooh, Urn. Urn coming back to the hand is really good for Brendan here. Switch, and has a hiding. So he's gonna need, okay, so three. Yeah, I don't, it's not game yet, he needs four energies. Old Cemetery. Is there a Raihan to go with it or something? Quick Ball. Finds a Hound Hour. Egg and Dark Slumber. Four, five, six, seven, eight. 160. Yeah, we're hitting 160 here. We're asleep. Wakes up. Don't matter. And does. Does he have it? He used Melodious Blast. Or Melodious Echo the last time. And then there is a knockout. In chat in the meantime while both of these players are getting set up and ready to go for the next match for the, or the next game of the set rather I want to tell you all a little bit about Fiji's Fight Club Fiji's Fight Club is a small IRL tournament series that I host out of my own home every other Wednesday 
in a, at a location located in Central Florida. The city is Altamont Springs. Really fun, $10 entry, cash prizing, $17.99, receive the Discord for more details. And just like that, the game is ready to go. All right, and game number two underway. Jose up the game, Brendan down. But Brendan is going first, opening the Gengar V mat, or sorry, the Gengar V, not Max, that'd be wild, right? Quick ball, gonna search us out one of the Hound Hours and start getting the flock out, getting the pups out. Brendan, looking like the biggest member of the Baja men right now. Cramomatic, let's see if he can actually really let the dogs out here. Oh boy, battle VIP pass off of the heads from the Cramomatic. Who let the dogs out? Who, 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 who? Two Hound Hours in play, two Gengars. Brandon liking this game a lot more already. Hiding Darkness being attached to the Gengar, and we're gonna Crobat for five fresh cards. And we see Cramomatic off of it too. So if we could cram and then find another battle VIP pass to get the other Hound Hour in play and literally just fill our board up with dogs and some Gengars, that's what Brandon really wants. Because Brandon actually, after seeing the Hunt Tail as well, knows that energy is important. Where he places it, how many of them he decides to use, and earn becomes very important as well. Path to the peak to end his turn. In a pass. A very, very solid turn one from Brandon here. Cramomatic coming out from Jose. Discarding a power tablet. Let's see what he flips off of it. Is it heads off the table? It is apparently a heads. Brandon not reaching his hand over and stopping him, so. Battle VIP pass is the card of choice here. We also have Old Cemetery in the hand as well. So it's not much of an issue here for uh, Jose to start drawing stuff off a of Fusion Strike system. Genesect and Mew. Three Fusions in play. Jose's idea here is uh, to start getting the engine out. We want to have another Mew ready to go just in case because there is a chance that if Jose doesn't get the ideal setup this turn... But this is pretty good, though, pushing that energy back. Infusion Strike system. It's another VIP pass. When you think path matters, and then it doesn't, dude. But still, it doesn't matter. Brandon had a very... This is probably the most solid turn one I've ever seen from a single strike deck on Brandon's side. Battle VIP pass gonna get out another Genesect and the Meloetta. Huntail very much carried the game last round, or the first game here, and Jose is honestly just trying to do it again. So Alessa Sparkle coming out. And here's the my biggest, like, I guess complaint about Mew, is the deck plays Pokemon in such a backwards way. Traditionally, when we play Pokemon, our Pokemon are there to have their abilities and have their attacks that support the other Pokemon in some way, right? And then our supporter for turn is dedicated to drawing our, drawing cards or something to support our hand for next turn. So we always have cards to play was the idea. But Mew breaks that entirely and flips the entire table on it by saying that abilities is what's drawing me the cards and then supporters are playing the energies out. Oh, how the turn tables turn, chat. Second fusion strike coming out. I get four freshies off that. So we're back to a six card hand. The sheer audacity Mew has drawing all these cards. And a free retreat into the Genesect V. He does not want to lose these Mews. And just a pass back to Brendan. Cramomatic from Brendan's side. Let's see what he gets on it. Hits a heads. Gengar VMAX. 
is his card of choice. And Professor Research. Remember, chat, Clam Pearl is the only Pokemon. Or the only. Sorry, Clam Pearl is the only thing that's out on Jose's side. It's not a Hunt Tail yet. So, Brandon's attacks cost the same amount as they usually do at the moment. Chromomatic failing. Hiding Darkness Energy coming down onto the Gengar. It's going to take two from Old Cemetery. Retreating for free into this naked Gengar and a pass back to Jose. charge my phone probably right it's probably a good idea switch from Jose able to jump back into this Mew but does he have the VMAX to go with it we do see the hunt tail online now as well fusion strike system hoping to find the VMAX and he finds it No supporter for turn yet either. Now, if I'm Jose, chat, what are we doing? Are we are we just gonna go full force and try to knock out these Pokemon or knock out these Gengars straight up with damage, or try to outlast Brendan, knock out the Hound Hours, and remove the engine so we can't keep surging these energies, and then he has to manually attach some while getting a few out from the ability. Melodious Echo coming out onto the Gengar to knock it out. Jose taking the first two prizes of this game too. Gengar VMAX back in play. The supporter of choice for Brendan was Marnie, so we will not see a boss's orders onto one of these Mews. And Jose not turning these things into VMAXs until they need to be. Evolution Incense from Brendan. Going to find another Houndoom. Brendan also managed to find a path to the peak as well. Attaching in, uh, another single strike via single strike roar. Going to put another two damage counters onto the Gengar VMAX. Gengar just going to take a quick knockout onto the Meloetta, removing the effect of Melodious Echo from Jose's arsenal of attacks. So Brendan at 5 now, and Jose is at 4. Still just sitting on two of these Hound Dooms as well. Um, so, but Brandon does have his three energies in play. Mew VMAX not out quite yet. There are two cards left in Jose's hand. One of them actually, oh, okay, so it's Genesect and then bossing up the Mew, or sorry, bossing up a Gengar. Rose Tower, drawing three off of Rose Tower. Fusion Strike System again, or sorry, for the first time this turn. So Rose Tower drawing him up to three. Genesect drawing him back up to six. We hit the Vitality Band. It goes on to the Mew. Another Cramomatic now. So we're hoping to find another... Okay, so... Yeah, it's Taylor. Rip, rip. So we have enough to take the knockout here with Technoblast. But the idea here is Jose is just trying to find more cards to support his hand for the following turn. Evolution Incense. Finding a Mew VMAX. Max. 
And remember, bosses was a supportive return. Another system. I wish these guys would just use the TC Evolutions counters, because they're literally there on the table, but who knows. don't think there's much left to do here, but Jose just take the knockout here. Going down to two prizes remaining. But something too that's also big is this Huntail is still in play, causing a lot of problems for Brendan. He does already have three energies attached to his active Gengar VMAX, so he can Fear and Panic as much as he wants. That's not an issue. So, Fear and Panic. Brandon going to take three more prizes and go down to two. Jose needs to find something this turn. Now, does he have a way to get uh, two energies attached and then bosses in the same turn? It does not seem like that could be a thing. This is where Jose is like one of Pokemon Catcher. Fog Crystal. Searching for a basic psychic or Pokemon. Or a basic Pokemon a basic psychic Pokemon or a basic psychic energy. Finding the psychic energy. We see training court as well in Jose's hand, so we do have a way to get path out of the way. But um So Jose thinking about the attachment here, yeah. I don't know either. I think um it's looking close to a game two situation bosses never mind I guess finger didn't leave the card technically so it's not considered played this might be game two or game three and retreating for free into the hunt tail does Brendan have bosses and switch Now this, the, the, these, this is the wire turn right here. Brandon needs bosses and switch to end this game. All Jose needs is, I mean, he'll, he'll need the same thing on his next turn because uh, Huntail does not have free retreat. Yeah, you are at two prizes. And Brandon does not want to bring up his Gengar unless he knows it's going to be a guaranteed win. So, wow, and just a pass. Does Jose seal up the deal right now? Oh, my goodness. Let's see if he gets it. No, doesn't immediately have it. Going to check the discard pile. It tells us that Jose is going to have to do a little bit of digging and some soul searching to find the win here. Quick ball. And he has, we see bosses. So there's another Mew. All he needs is energy bosses. Oh, and a, yeah, because he already has the, or the escape rope in his hand too. What an intense game, because this could seal up Jose to go up to three and one. And this will, I mean, if, if he loses this game too, then um, we're now in a game three situation and time becomes an issue. So here's training court. Now we're bumping path. Peony. 
discarding all of the trainers to search his deck for two cards. So no bosses this turn. Giving Brandon another chance at life here. But Jose also counting out Brandon's discard as well. There could be something that he is out of that we are not aware of. We also see double switch in his deck. Grabbing switch and bosses for the next turn. Essentially guaranteeing, him, ooh, guaranteeing himself to have the win. Training court. Put that energy down. System. Goes back up to six. And just a pass. Does Brendan have it? Darkness and bosses. He finds the win here. Brandon closing out this game number two, taking us up to game three. Unreal. When it comes down to the wire, the deck you think would just sweep it because, you know, weakness and all that. But Jose building this Mew deck just to be able to handle situations like that. What a game just now. Hopefully we have enough time to finish this game number three here. Absolutely wild. So, I'll go back to this. While these players are shuffling up and getting ready for game number three now, I want to talk to you all about Fiji's Fight Club. Fiji's Fight Club, a IRL tournament series that I host on this channel, and I host it outside of my house, or inside of my house too, every other Wednesday on this channel. So if you guys want to see some, you know, casual, hanging out, just some homies playing a standard tournament for money, or GLC, because I've been messing with that lately too. Follow this channel and make sure you have the notifications on so you can see when we go live. Every other Wednesday, this event is $10. Entry comes with a snack and a drink. There's cash prizing. It's 17 to or 17 plus to enter, and I have a Discord for it as well. Uh, here you all go if you want to check out the Discord. But yeah, these this, these uh this tournament series is a lot of fun for me. I came up with it uh, out of the blue ones because, you know, we're not doing a lot of locals here in Florida right now, especially in Central Florida. So this is my best way to get back to the players. I love doing it. The locals that we have come out to it love it as well. So, yeah, I hope to see you guys there. And here we are, game number three. Jose starting us right off with another Battle VIP pass. Going to find himself two basic Pokemon and put them onto his bench immediately. But yeah, chat, if you all are enjoying what you're seeing here today, please consider following the channel. Maybe even subscribe. Everything that I make from this channel, it supports my life and this channel in every way. So I really do appreciate the support. Gamers R Us also loves the support from all of you as well. If you guys ever find yourself in the Cocoa Beach, or the sorry, the Cocoa area, not Cocoa Beach, the Cocoa area, please check out Gamers R Us. Really cool guys. Really cool store. Lots of space. And there's a subway in the plaza. All right. So starting us off with the Battle VIP pass to grab Genesect V and Mew V. Quick balling Peony away to immediately grab that clutch Clam Pearl to start us off and get us to that Hunt Tail as fast as possible. Escape Rope, going to put that Mew into the active, saving the Meloetta on the bench. Cramomatic, discarding an Evolution Incense. Let's see if he hits big. Does not hit big. Fusion Strike System, getting two cards, finds another cram. And just a pass over to Brendan. Brandon quick balling away his one single strike Urshifu B, searching out one of the dogs. Ow. Oh. You guys like that Migos? Ow. Oh. But uh, Marty from Brandon, really early, getting five fresh ones. Jose getting four. Battle VIP pass. Now something that comes into play now is speed. 
both of these players are if they want to actually complete this game and see a winner of this set and not a tie speed 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 this isn't me saying anyone is playing slow particularly i think they're both playing at a perfectly a per the perfect pace honestly but we both have to just play a little bit faster in order for us to actually complete this game So Battle VIP Pass is going to find us Gengar V and Houndour. Brendan knowing also that the Huntail is on the way, so just shoving out as many Houndours as possible. Hiding Darkness, making it so we can retreat for free. Brendan doesn't know if he wants to do that, though. And retreating a pass. Doesn't want to offer Jose the chance to knock out his one Pokemon that has energy on it that he's building up currently. He knows now energy is gold in this matchup, and we don't like giving away gold for free. Never, 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 never. Fog Crystal. So see, this part of the turn is where Mew starts doing his dailies, you know what I mean? It's getting all of its dailies out of the way. Getting all the quick balls out of the way, getting all of the basics into play, and then we're going to start farming, looking for the evolution incenses. But then go to the gear honing vendor and turn all these Mews into Mew V Maxes. What a wild trip. And now, Rose Tower. Something cool about Jose's build, too. He finds himself going to zero cards in hand a lot. So, Rose Tower is honestly such a good card in this, uh, in this variant of the deck. Fog Crystal, not going to get anything. Just going to play it just to get a chance to shuffle his deck. Then a card out. And Fusion Strike System. Trying four here. Alessa Sparkle. Gonna grab us two Fusion Strike Energies and attach them to our Pokemon in any way we like. I can only imagine one to the Mew in the active, and then one to the Mew on the bench. This card's broken. This is what I was saying a second ago too, when I was saying that Mew takes the uh, Mew takes the standard way, the traditional way of playing Pokemon, the trading card game, and flips it upside down by making it so that the Pokemon are the ones making you draw cards, and the supporters are the ones playing the energies for you, as opposed to the traditional supporters drawing your cards and the Pokemon doing you know Pokemon things. Mew V Max coming down onto Jose's active. We are now ready to start using Cross Fusion Strike. Technoblast will just eat a eat a eat a knockout here on the Gengar immediately. Taken two. That was the quickest two prizes I've ever seen be taken. <laughs> it looked like he just took one card, dude. So Jose at four, Brennan at six still, but Brennan's about to take three because uh, Huntail's not online. And if I'm a betting man and I know how Jose is, I wouldn't be surprised if Jose prized the Huntail and he just played the Clam Pearl down for mind games. I mean, if I was him, I would a thousand percent do that always. It's an insane mind game. All right, Fear and Panic gonna knock out the Mew VMAX awarding Brandon three prizes. How many rounds and how many participants? Six rounds, 45 players? 45 players, six rounds? So Jose needs to find energy for this active Mew and then the Mew VMAX in order to keep swinging here. But um, I think the attack we actually really want to go for, oh, yep, and uh, doesn't have it. Oh, well. Jose saying, I can't find it. You're just going to knock me out again next turn. And uh, with five minutes left to spare, that is the end of the game. Unfortunately, it do be like that sometimes. Uh, 